Hi, I'm Maxwell, and I'm in grade 11, Templeton STEM, and for this year's capstone project, I decided to make a data logger for my model rocket. The first phase of this project was actually completed earlier this year in capstone phase A, when I built the rocket itself and designed a spreadsheet that could model how it would fly. Uh, in this phase of the project, capstone phase B, I will be making an electronic measuring device that can go inside the rocket and get real data on what it does. So here is the sensor setup uh, with everything attached, all ready to go. Uh, the main thing is the Arduino Pro Mini. This is basically like a computer without a keyboard or a screen or a mouse, and it's very, very small, so that's useful. Uh, now everything is connected to this. So first, the largest thing, the SD card reader. This is how it tracks all of the data that it gathers. And then we've got the measurement module, which is what gives us all of the data. It can measure acceleration, altitude, barometric pressure, and temperature. Uh, we've got a Bluetooth module, uh, which can communicate with my phone so I can see everything that the sensor is seeing while it's packed away in the rocket. And lastly, we've got a little buzzer here that will buzz when the rocket lands, and I'll be able to find it if it gets lost. So after completing the physical build of the project, I would need to do the software build, which is the coding. Uh, there, It's not very easy to understand, so I'll just scroll through it very quickly. And basically all it says is go to sensor, figure out what sensor says, put it on the SD card, and everything's good. And then it says buzzer go after this amount of time, because that's how long it'll take for the or how long I would guess it would take for the rocket to hit the ground and need the buzzer. So after many days of troubleshooting, it was finally ready and we took it to the field to fly. In total, we did three flights with the rocket, one in a single stage configuration and two in a dual stage. Uh, but I'm only going to add this footage here just because there is limited time. This was by far the best flight. It was with the strongest engines and the dual stage, and it went very straight into the air. Definitely went the highest out of all of them, and it's going to give us the best data that we can get. So, there it is. So here is the predicted acceleration in G's, and here is the actual acceleration in numbers that aren't G's. Uh, we didn't have time in this project to actually calibrate the accelerometer, so it just spits out these raw number values. Um, but uh, another issue that we had with it is that it doesn't, it, it seemed to max out. It, apparently it was supposed to be able to do 16G, although that is evidently not the case, because it doesn't get to the top of these spikes, and that's only 6G, and that's only 10G. So uh, what we're seeing here is the accelerometer kind of failing. Although we can still draw some uh, some similarities in between these, you can see as it goes up, it doesn't get the whole spike, but as it would come back down, we can see the first engine stopping and running out of fuel, like here, and then the gap in between, and then the second engine firing, and the acceleration goes up, it peaks, and then it comes back down as it runs out of fuel, and then it goes on its falling run until the parachute opens and it gets all confused when it spins around. Because it's a three-axis accelerometer, it would get all confused when it, when it spins and flips and all that. So this data here is not the most useful. Here we've got the predicted altitude reading and the actual altitude reading. Uh, this one's a little bit better than the accelerometer. The altimeter was uh, a little bit more accurate, I would say. It jumps around a little bit. Uh, Realistically, it definitely did not do that. That would be impossible, and it's probably not like doing all this little stuff. Except the overall number, the maximum height that it got to, 140 meters, is definitely believable from the video. And it makes sense that it's about 20 meters, or a little bit lower than the predicted value, as this assumes that the rocket is going directly into the air and that there's no wind bothering it or anything. Um, and realistically, that is not the case. So it would make sense that it went a little bit lower than it would be predicted. Here we've got the pressure reading compared to the altitude reading and uh, this is standard pressure right here sitting on the ground and we see that as the altitude goes up the pressure goes down like it should. The higher you go the less air pressure there is and then it slowly comes back 
uh, down to the ground and the pressure comes up as that happens back to standard pressure while it sits on the ground. That's about it. I had a ton of fun doing this project and uh, some next steps would be to calibrate the electronics or maybe get some better electronics that would work and get some better data. Uh, but that would be a whole project of its own. So uh, next time. Thanks so much for watching.